Hello friends, it's time for a very important video, and that is to discuss my worst books of 2023, and God, were there some stinkers. <laughs> God, we've had some bad ones this year. I have been pushed to the limit with this. To be honest though, in previous years, I've just felt, I felt angry, right? I get angry over bad books. This year I just feel sad. I look at these books and I'm just sad at what could have been and how they could have been better and just how we could not be in this situation. I don't know if I feel angry. Maybe I'll get angry as, <laughs> as I start talking. But I just kind of, I don't know. I feel like the books that have been bad this year for me have just been kind of just so painfully nothing. I feel like because a lot of the books that came out this year in terms of 2023 releases were people's COVID books. I feel like you can kind of feel that a little bit in the energy of the books. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. But let's just get into it, shall we? I have ranked these from least worst to most worst. I mean, they're all worst. <laughs> So we are gonna work our way up to my worst book of the year. We've got a few two stars, and then I think I've got one 1.5 and four one stars. So the top five are all, you know, particularly awful. But shall we just begin and get into it? You're gonna see, particularly at the start of this list, in fact, the first three books of this list <laughs> are all um, Goodreads Choice Awards winners. Yep, yep. Yeah. Number 10, coming in at number 10 is one that it could just be on this list because I'm, I'm still bitter. <laughs> I haven't gotten over it, but it's The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. <laughs> Did not enjoy this at all. And I'm, I'm still, I'm, I don't want to talk about the fact that it won. I don't want to talk about the fact that it won. Can we just not? I don't. <laughs> trauma, family trauma, generational trauma, family trauma. You know, generational trauma. Generational trauma. Generational trauma. Yeah. Trauma. Not ready to discuss it. As you guys saw in the Goodreads Choice Awards vlog where I found out that this one, I was pretty, I was pretty heartbroken. But basically this is the sequel to The Housemaid and we're following this woman who is a housemaid and she is um, cleaning and being a housemaid for this rich ass couple and she starts to think that the woman is being abused by her husband and wants to try and help her out of that situation. For me, I mean, it could be that it reminded me a lot of a other bad book that is higher up on this list. The mix of romance and mystery didn't work for me. There's a little bit of a romance subplot going on or like multiple romance. Oh my God, I forgot about the other guy. <laughs> And I just feel like the mystery and the tropes are ones that have been played over and over and over and over and over again. Maybe the reason this has been so popular is there's an element of familiarity to this. I know there's been a lot of plagiarism claims. I don't know a ton about that, but like, you know, I have read this story 10 times. <laughs> before. And the, yeah, the writing isn't good enough to justify this being as popular as it is for me. I, 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 don't, I don't understand the success of Miss Frida. I know at this rate, because she puts out like fucking 10 books a year. I know at this rate, I'm gonna have to probably get another one of her books next year, The Good News Choice Awards. If that wins, I may stop doing those videos because what is the point? What is the point? There'll be a new Lucy Foley, that might save us. There'll be the new Nita Prose. There may be some stronger competitors <laughs> to take down Frida McFadden. But like, you guys were telling me she's got these like fans on Facebook who like mobilize a campaign to vote for, and I just, this is like evil, 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 evil. I'm not into <laughs> <laughs> this probably has snuck onto the list, so I'm gonna be completely transparent honest with you, because of how angry I am that it won. Like, it's probably not number, there probably were a few other two stars that could have snuck in at number 10, but this just goes on here, I'm, I'm angry. <laughs> hmm. Bitch. Mother piece of shit. And you know, I said in the video, it has some elements of thrillers in terms of abusive husbands that I'm not a massive fan of, that I don't think are a problem in an individual book, but I've read them so much across so many thrillers that it does start to annoy me when I keep reading them. I just read another book like that where the the abused woman can't leave because he, the husband is so powerful. He could track her down, he could chase her. He has eyes all over the city, you find out who she is, rather than just a woman not being able to leave because of how difficult it is to leave abusive relationships. Again, it, like I said, it's not a problem on an individual book, but when you when that's a trend, it does annoy me <laughs> within the thriller space. Um, yeah. Miss Frida, I wish I could say I'm never gonna read you again, but I know I am. I know I am, so. <laughs> then we've got a jewel winner of a good reese choice was. Let me hear, yeah, 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 jewel winner. Wayward. Wayward by Amelia Hart. It's 
not good, guys. Don't pick it up. <laughs> this won both historical fiction and debut. Oh, God. Stop. It's actually painful to watch. We're following three related women in different points in history who all may be witches and are all going through difficult things. We've got one in a present day who's leaving an abusive relationship. We've got one in 1940s who is very constrained within her family life and that is kind of her storyline. And we've got one in the 1600s who is being tried for witchcraft. Now, here's the thing, it is triple timeline. These timelines do not really converge in any proper way. So you've got three separate stories, right? And it's 300 and whatever pages. You've basically got three novellas, right? And th there's just not enough of a connection between these storylines to make me interested. I think that each of these storylines are such base level, like basic versions of these stories that again, we've heard time and time again. I just don't like triple timeline. <laughs> because none of these were interesting to me. None of them held my attention and it didn't work going back and forth between them because I just didn't care. I didn't care, I didn't care. Clap if you care. <laughs> clap, if you, clap if you care. And like I said, each of the storylines I've read in a whole novel, basically in better versions. There was nothing original to each of these storylines. There wasn't enough of a payoff. It wasn't really witchy. That is another really pet hatred of mine is when a book is marketed as witches and like is the tiniest minuscule amount about witches. I, I just don't, this does not deserve being <laughs> a dual winner in my opinion. And then eighth on the list, no, no, you won't be surprised to see this. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. But here's the thing, I know I'm somewhat in the, well, I feel like it's a large minority, but I am in the minority because most people love this. So I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, but it ain't good. It's trash, in fact. It is bad, in fact. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get how anyone could like this. You all know what this is about, so I do not need to tell you the plot. I don't think the world building is good. I don't think the fantasy is good. I don't think the plot is good. I don't think the writing is good. I don't think the romance, which really this is romantic. I don't think the rom romance is good. Apart from maybe there was one scene that worked for me. On the whole, there's no chemistry. There's no characters I care about. The only reason this was a two and not a one star was the last page ending. I did enjoy that little twist, Rooney. But as time goes on, I do not think I'm gonna ever read Iron Flame for multiple reasons, which I'm sure many of you know, we don't need to fully get into it, but I think that's all we need to say about Fourth Wing. Yeah, no thank you, Rebecca Yaros. No thank you. <laughs> Number seven is a book that's not even out yet, and I feel bad, I think this is gonna be a big release next year, and I feel bad that I, uh, that I really did not like this, and it is The Antique Hunter's Guide to Murder by C.L. Miller. This comes out in January, no, February 2024. I got an arc. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this book, I spoke to you guys about it for so long, for so long, about how excited I was for it, because it's murder mystery meets antiques. And if you've been here a long time, you know, every day I watch Bargain Hunt. I'm an antiques expert. <laughs> Any book wants to be written for me, this is it. It's also pictures meet Indiana Jones. Right, let's get into it. My biggest issue with this book is that from, I'd say, the 100 page mark, we are in this stately home, country house place, right? Where all the characters you know, you, you could see it as an isolated murder mystery, but they can come and go, you know, people aren't stuck there. We're not stuck in this house. And I kid you not, nothing happens. Nothing happens. You tell me Indiana Jones, I'm expecting heists and, and fast pay because they just sit around and talk at this house for the whole book. It's so boring. Yawning, sloppy, lazy. It's so boring, really boring. <laughs> I really hate books where nothing happens. And in terms of like, if, if it's a literary book where we're more going into characters' inner motivations and thoughts and feelings, like I can understand that, right? But in something that's pictured itself as Indiana Jones, you best believe shit better happen, you know? If you guys compare the Thursday Murder Club, which I think does so well, so much happening. It's got very short chapters. We constantly have like three different storylines going on that we're kind of flitting back and forth between and the plot is always moving along and we're going this place and that place and talking to this person. There's like five scenes in this book. 
five scenes, five scenes. <laughs> it was such a disappointment for me because this was one of my most anticipated books once I got my hands on it and it, it's not great. And I think this is gonna be a big release next year. I mean, I could be wrong, but it really did not work for me. I found it very, very boring. Moving on. <laughs> Number six, we have one of the first books that I don't own. There's a few on here I don't own, a few I can't find for the life of me. I might have unhauled them. Um, but we have Smoking 17 uh, by Janet someone. I can't remember this book. I've, I've put it out of my memory. I read this for the winners of the Goodreads mystery thriller throughout the years. This was one of the earliest winners and she's no one was voting because how did this win? <laughs> this is number 17 in this kind of cozy mystery slash romance series. And I get what it's trying to do and I'm just not the audience of what it's trying to do and I don't think it's doing well. Like it, there's, from what I understand, there's these two men in this woman's life. It's mostly about the romance. It's not really about the mystery and it's trying to be funny but it's really not funny and it's got some really harmful stereotypes in it. But there's these two men and once her boyfriend, like her boyfriend, like, calling him her boyfriend. And there's this other guy who she's sleeping with. And she's like, oh, you know, me and my boyfriend don't talk about whether we're sleeping with other people or not. Well, then you're, 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 you're dating. He's not your boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? And she just goes and sleeps with this other guy. And I'm like, sorry. I always knew there was some type of scandal. I felt it. If this was an open communication between you and your boyfriend, fine, I don't care. But like, he could be thinking you're exclusive, just going and fucking this other guy and then the multiple scenes where both guys turn up and it's just oh oh and the the mystery was so bad i can't even remember what the mystery was she's like a is she a debt collector there's like a dead body i don't know guys it was really bad it was like beyond bad it was beyond i don't understand these are this is a very you're know, going back in time <laughs> from what i understand quite a popular series and i don't get it i don't think it's funny i don't think it's engaging i don't think it's hot in terms of the romance i don't think <laughs> that's enough of that okay then we're getting into the 1.5 and then we'll get into the one so my 1.5 this year was book of night by holly black what was this i read this very early on in the year so i've kind of got rid of it in my brain but we've got a girly who's not like other girls and got this dark world that she lives in and there's something to do with shadows like if you lose your shadow or like you buy shadows oh, i can't remember and she's like winning and dealing like trying to escape this world of criminals but can't really um this is a ninth house ripoff holly black what did you think you were doing you tried to rip off ninth house but did it terribly yep 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 i just thought this was terrible i don't understand this is my first introduction to holly black and it just is it's one of those books I can't really point you towards what's bad. Like, is the writing bad? Eh. Is the plot bad? Eh. But there's just something about it that just reeks. <laughs> wasn't good. The ending wasn't good. I can see why this was so unpopular when it came out. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just surprised. Like, I feel like a lot of those traditional YA authors from back in the day are all making their switch to adult now. Like Lee Bardugo did that with Ninth House, Cassandra Clare is doing it now, Holly Black did it with this, and this feels like the least successful, if we're completely honest, of those. So yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. I've like forgotten everything about that book. <laughs> Okay, let's begin one stars. Coming at number four is The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. Now, this could have just been the fact that I have very, very, very high standards for murder mysteries and this was one of the worst I've ever read. Is it technically one star? Yeah, okay, it is. <laughs> I read A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle and I gave that like a three, but this one, it's pitched as there's these characters who go to this house for a New Year's Eve party that's 1920s murder mystery game themed. I got excited because they're playing a murder mystery game like Cluedo, but like in person at this party, but then there's like real murders. So it was a very exciting pitch to me. The murder mystery game never happens. Never happens because someone dies and then they're just like, oh, we're not gonna play a murder mystery game now. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. There were so many ways to have done that synopsis in a much more interesting way, in a much more exciting way. It, it, it is wasted. <laughs> New Year's Eve party where they're playing a murder mystery game. Think of all the fun you could have with that in this isolated, cold, dark house on the like, in the, in this edge of a beach, right? 
just think of just I just want you to sit there and I'm sure you could imagine lots of fun ways that you could incorporate the murder mystery game into the murders that doesn't happen someone dies and they'll just sit around in a fucking house for hours until more people die nothing happens the characters were completely lackluster the writing wasn't great it wasn't good and so that's me and Tom Hindle divorce which is sad because he's one of the biggest like UK classic murder mystery taking inspiration from Agatha Christie authors out there at the moment but I I cannot continue I can't continue in good faith very sad <laughs> Coming number three is a book I never bought. I never got my hands on because I probably knew I could sense it, my spidey senses. <laughs> and that is The Stranger Upstairs by an author I cannot remember. <laughs> These bad ones, I just can't. I The authors leave my brain. I read this for Gabby's Book Club. Uh, yeah, it was bad. It's about an influencer who buys a murder house. So like where a big famous murder happened, she's trying to flip it. And what else? There's like another big, oh, she starts like losing her mind and like, is the whole house haunted? Oh, it was bad, it was bad, it was bad, it was bad, it was bad. First of all, I don't like when a book incorporates some kind of trendy career, in this case, an influencer. It's not really clear. Does she have a blog? Does she do Instagram? It annoys me so much when a book incorporates that, but doesn't get it. You do, like completely does not get it. Does not get how an influencer would conduct themselves. Don't do it if you don't get it. <laughs> Like, she would be posting on Instagram, like, at the end of an Instagram caption, like, any sponsors want to work with me? Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You, you'd email them privately, but you wouldn't at the end of your Instagram be like, anyone want to sponsor me? <laughs> just... And it just went out the window. Like, she was also a psychiatrist, but she, <laughs> I can't remember. I actually, there's more to this plot. I'm just forgetting it. The romance, like her and her husband are on the ropes, that's stupid. It's all stupid. It's stupid, 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 stupid. I really hated it. I'm so sorry. Also, oh yeah, that was it. The audiobook. The audiobook is bad. I listened exclusively to the audiobook. That's why I don't own it. And like, she would, she would like constantly like scream stuff. Oh, and that was it. There was a... <laughs> This is like petty. These are little things that annoyed me. But basically, in the murder that happened back in the day, we read a scene about that murder happened back in the day, and like apparently the daughter who didn't die but like ran away was like running down the street saying, "Don't kill me! Don't kill me!" But like then that <laughs> that would just that was like a running motif throughout the book that would just appear in a random scene when like our main girlie was just going about her day. Then the audiobook narrator would suddenly be like, "Don't kill me! Don't kill me!" <laughs> pissed me off it really pissed me off like I can get easily pissed off by a book and then just check out so I know that's petty but it really annoyed me <laughs> then coming in at number two is a book I did own I think I must have unhauled it because I can't find it I can't see it and that is Wild and Wicked Things Pfft, again can't remember the author you'll see it here <laughs> This was a book I read earlier this year for my patron book club and it's pitched as witchy, Great Gatsby inspired but sapphic and there's just a ridiculous amount of bad stuff that happens in this book. It's a debut and I just feel like this book was trying to too, too much. The live show for this was really, really fun. Like the live show for this was a highlight for me because we were just dunking on this book. We all pretty much didn't enjoy it. And I think a few people maybe gave it a three, but I think that's the really the highest that it got. You were just constantly remembering things. Like someone would say something and remember like another element of this plot that <laughs> happened and was ridiculous. And we'd be like, no. I don't know that did happen. The great Gatsbyness is kind of there at the beginning, but then dissipates. And you're not like it's been pitched by I feel like booksellers as Great Gatsby inspired, but like it never says anywhere within the book, or I feel like the author hasn't said it's Great Gatsby inspired. But like you can see there's moments where it's like, oh, the blue light across the lake or whatever, where you can see direct inspiration and some of the characters you can see that, but then also it it's not. <laughs> And the magic made no sense. I don't even know where to begin with you. I don't even know where to begin. The writing wasn't good. There were so many plot holes. It, it, it wasn't good. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And then my worst book of the year, easily, is Every Line of You by Naomi Gibson. Oh, girl. <laughs> this is YA, where I don't want to get into this too much. How much do I want to get into this? Because some of this is spoilers, what I have to say. Let me give you a vague synopsis first. Okay, well, a girlie makes an AI that she names after her dead brother. She's being bullied. Her AI is her friend. 
um, where do I go with this? No, I need to tell you, I need to tell you, I need to tell you, okay. And we're getting into spoilers here because I need to tell you the ridiculousness of what this book put me through. So her and the AI start to fall in love and he like gets her to keep amping up what, what she's putting him in. So like in her phone, so he can be with her at all times. But then she tries to put him in a boy from school's body and is like cutting him open, maybe damaging his spine permanently it turns out, but she gets caught and taken to a mental hospital and like disconnected from Henry, who by the way, she's named after her dead brother. She's named the AI after her dead brother. Okay, okay, so a little bit incesty, like she's falling in love with the thing that she's named after her dead brother. And then um, there's this like agent, like hacking agent who's been like watching her for ages or whatever. He comes to visit her at this mental hospital. She, she corners him, somehow implants Henry, the AI, into his body. They run away together. They, they, they have sex. <laughs> Which, let's just talk about it for a second. Um, that's... I don't think I can say that on, on, on YouTube without getting demonetized, but we know that's not consensual because she's using that guy's body who's trapped in there and apparently is like realizing everything that's going on, this grown man. But she's like, oh, me and Henry, no. No, you and that man who you're forcing to do something against his will. And then like there's this big scene at the end where like he gets he gets killed, Henry gets killed, but then he maybe he's back and there's Nova. It's like by the end she hasn't realized what she's done. Oh guys, it's so bad. It's so bad. Evil, evil. And like this is YA, right? So if this was an adult book, her being like a villain by the end or she's not clearly a villain but you know having not learned any repercussions really from her actions i'd be okay with but like i think with ya you sometimes when a character is doing as terrible things as this character is it's kind of romanticized at the end like her and henry might be reunited this is a very unhealthy you know the ai is very controlling of her it's a very unhealthy relationship dynamic there needs to be some sort of um condemnation of this whole situation and there isn't the writing is terrible I, there's like this, there's a, there's, <laughs> I don't know how much I want to get into this. this. This book is a rabbit hole. This is completely alleged. This is completely alleged. This is completely alleged. I'm not saying any of this is true, but there is a review on Goodreads that alleges that this book has been written using AI with her book as like a basis. So it's like plagiarized her book with AI. Like a, it's a rabbit hole. It, this was terrible. <laughs> There's no words. It was really bad. And it is my worst book of 2023. So there we have it, everyone. That's my worst books of the year. Let me know if you disagree with me on any of these. Did you love them? Did you didn't agree with me on any of them? Did you hate them as well? But yeah, there were some bad books this year. I feel actually cathartic having discussed it all with you. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what some of your worst books of the year are as well. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!